Right, this is probably the dullest experiment what you'll actually do. Um, the measuring enthalpy change, so the second required practical. What you'll have is some anhydrous copper sulfate and also some hydrated copper sulfate. And you're required to weigh out a certain mass of these and add them to either 24 or 25 cubic centimetres of water respectively and record the temperature change. So for going through it, simple thing to do, obviously record the mass of the boat and the solid. So you're asked to weigh out um, 4 grams if I remember right for this, so there's about 4 grams there. And we're going to put that to one side. So we have our 24 cubic centimetres of water in here. Thermometer in, and you record the temperature every minute for three minutes, if I remember right. So make sure you either have a stopwatch or your phone, set your timer on every minute, write the temperature down. So one minute, record temperature, two minute, record temperature, so forth. So ideally, you want the thermometer the 0 to 50, so you've got more actual, uh, well, you've got a higher resolution on it. And what I would suggest is actually getting a clamp and sitting the clamp around said thermometer like this just so it doesn't fall. Otherwise students tend to leave it like this, slightest breeze, it tips, it falls out, congratulations, get a cloth, clean up, start again. So don't do that. So at the fourth minute what you would do, you take your solid, you chuck it in, don't record the temperature at the fourth minute. The reason why is it needs a little bit of time for the actual solution to heat up the thermometer. The thermometer will be rising, so at that fourth minute it will be climbing. You'll not be able to record it accurately. Record the weight of your boat. So the difference between now and what you recorded earlier is the amount of solid what you added. At the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, so 4th minute, record the temperature again and continue for about 10 minutes roughly or until it flattens off if it's came back down fairly quickly. So I'm not going to stand here for that period of time with you watching that. I assume you know how time passes. So what you should end up with is if we plot a graph like this, First three minutes, temperature should be fairly stable since you're just recording the temperature of water in a room. Fourth minute, do not record anything. So, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, etc. onwards, record your temperatures on there. We now need to extrapolate the lines of best fit. So, extrapolate just means continue on. The reason we do that that change there we can now work out the temperature change at the fourth minute and that's what you'll use in the Q equals MC Delta T calculation so the mass you would use the mass of the actual water what you've put in the solid does have mass as well, however at air level it tends to just say ignore that, so ignore the conservation of mass rule and just go with the mass of the liquid, in this case water, what you've added in there. C, the specific heat capacity would be 4.184 water and the delta T, the temperature change there, so that lets you work out Q. Then for the enthalpy change, Q over number of moles. So if you know what solid, what mass of solid you've used, you'll know the MR of the solid. That lets you work out the number of moles. So Q over number of moles gives you the enthalpy change for that. So it doesn't always have to be solid put into water in this case. You can do this with an enthalpy of neutralization reaction. So having, say, 20 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid, record the temperature of that for a period of time, and then chuck in 20 cubic centimetres of sodium hydroxide, for example. And at the fourth minute, when you put it in, don't record the temperature, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc. 
record it, plot your axes and get the temperature change and that lets you work out delta H for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now what more typically appears in the exams are the enthalpies of combustion from burning the alcohols. So how you would do this, set up your apparatus like you like, as you like but as long as you've kind of got the alcohol under a beaker containing some water. So get a measuring cylinder, record your water. So about 50 cubic centimetres there. So water density 1 gram per 1 cubic centimetre. So my mass of the solution being heated, when I'm doing the Q equals MC delta T calculation, it's the 50 from that. Nothing to do with this, right? It's annoying how many people get that wrong. The mass of the stuff being heated is what you use in Q equals MC delta T. We've got our alcohol under here. I'm not going to burn it because I haven't turned the fire alarms off and they're a pain in the butt. They always go off at the slightest thing. So you would record your alcohol there. You can record it with a cap on if you wish. It doesn't make any particular difference as long as you stick with the same one at the end. So I've got my mass of the alcohol in the container. I would put that under there. I would light it. Let it burn for a period of time. You don't have to burn all of the fuel. As long as you know how much you've burnt, you will get the same answer for the delta H calculation at the end. So let the water heat up by 20, 30 degrees Celsius. Stop the fire. Easiest way to do it. If you can't blow it out, just put the cap on and then record the mass. So obviously the change in mass between what you started at, what you finished at, you need that for working out the number of moles what was burnt. So when you work out delta H with Q over N, that's why you need the mass of this. Now obviously all of these experiments aren't that great. You've got heat loss coming out here, you've got heat loss there, you've got heat loss coming out here. So they're quite basic, obviously, school, college experiments. Ideally, if you wanted to do this perfectly, you would do it in something called a bomb calorimeter where it's sealed and the heat can't actually get out and in effect all of the energy would be transferred into the solution. But other than that, very basic experiment and yeah, that's it.